Hello everyone and welcome to another scrapbook layout process that I'm going to go through with you. What I'm focusing on today, as you can see with what's in front of me, are the Picture My Life cards, specifically the ones from the Gazette Picture My Life cards. They are so, so pretty and delicate and I love all the muted tones and the vintage and shabby chic type feel to these. And I decided I wanted to put some layouts together using primarily the PML cards. And I used all my die cuts on, on the Gazette set workshop guide that I created where I did eight layouts or four double page spreads. I will put a link to that at the end of this video, but you can check the little information box up here for a direct click. But I didn't introduce the PML cards into those layouts because I wanted to keep them separate to create their own pages. I've already gone through and I've done some sorting, but what I'm thinking I'm going to do is bring in some stamping with these sets. So I have the ornamental borders, I have family roots, I've got the cassette card making, which has stamp plus thin cuts. So these have thin cuts to go with them and you would have seen them if you watched my cassette layouts that I've previously done. I also bring in this Parisian notes, this textured stamp. This was a special for the month of March, which was the Stamptacular special. And it was an exclusive stamp set just for that month. And I actually didn't get around to using it in March. So I'm thinking that these four stamp sets are going to work really really well with these Picture My Life cards. The introduction to this, I'm going to show you what I've done with my sorting. What I do is I put all of the PML cards out on a table and then I just grab which ones I think will go together for a layout. Now this process may change as I go through making these pages. In order to keep them a bit short, this will be a series like other PML cards or pocket cards that I've done before. So I've sorted these ones all together because I thought these worked quite Quite well and then I've put them with French vanilla and I've layered these all up so you can see what sort of a process I do with this with organization and then I've brought in some mist cardstock to use as well so this is the first lot that I've put together that I think will go quite well and if you've watched any of my other pocket card scrapbooking layouts you'll know that I do some cutting up and I try and extend the use of these cards rather than just keeping them as a six by four or as a three by four card you can cut these up and extend their use and create really beautiful scrapbooking layouts. So that's the first lot of sorting that I did. And then I went on and I put together all these pretty, pretty florals. So basically I pulled out the florals that I knew I wanted to put together. And then this is more of a print so I could cut around these and use these as embellishments or I could use this other side which would then bring in more of this green tone, the Seabrook tone. And these sorts of cards I use primarily for my titles so that I don't have to do any stamping or create a title for the page. The pocket cards you can use for as well. So there's options with this. I can turn them over and work out exactly what colorway I'm going to do. And for the cardstock, it's French vanilla all the way through. But for this one, I've actually got Desert Rose. Now, when I flip Desert Rose over, this is the true color side and it's a little bit stronger. I thought what I would use is the light shade, which matches in with this floral element here a bit better, I think. This is the third sorting that I've done. So this one has a little bit more of a masculine feel to it. And I've already gone ahead and fussy cut the typewriter out of this PML card to use as an embellishment because I just knew that when I was looking at this, that was just too much of the yellow color to pull in with this and that was just pulling focus a bit. And I have gone right up to the edge of the typewriter. I wanted to show you my sorting process of this before I actually get into creating one of the layouts. Now when I'm looking at this there's obviously floral elements here but I'm thinking I could use this piece here as a journaling spot even though there are two and you can see on the other side these have a similar sort of feel to them so one side was for the six by fours are printed in a landscape orientation and the other side is printed in a portrait orientation and there's usually a different colorway depending on which side you flip it over 
And for this one, I have selected pine and that will bring in this green element here because I want to use that as a title. And as you can see from flipping through this, I've got three double page spreads with my sorting. I decided that I was going to try and just do three and concentrate on these PML cards. I'm thinking with my sorting that I'm pretty much set with three double page spreads and I actually have one PML card left over that I haven't brought in anywhere and it's mainly due to the background of it. The colors didn't quite go with this one here. This is a white so I don't want to mix these two together and on the floral page I actually have quite a few florals but what I'm thinking of doing rather than just having one left over is to fussy cut this out and create a card with it. So I'm just going to put this one aside and clear this up and then I'll get into creating the first double page spread. I'm going to put the first layer together and I'm going to assemble the left side of the page on camera and then bring in the right page because I've pretty much finished that off except for a couple of little treatments. What I've decided to do for this one is use rosemary and mist and I've cut the French vanilla down to 11 and a half by 11 and a half and what I normally do when I'm doing such a large mat for a background is that I do gut out the middle part of it because I want to use the center of this for photo mats. So you do need to have a rail type trimmer for this so that you can come in an inch to an inch and then turn it around and cut out a square of the center. And that helps me with getting mats for my photo holders. So I'm just going to set these aside for the moment and bring in some copy paper. And the images that I'm going to use, I didn't bring this stamp set in at the very beginning of the video. And I remember that I had the Cosette card making workshop kit. It's still all in its bundle. And then I was thinking about what stamp sets I was going to use for these picture my life or pocket card layouts and I thought these elements here with the postage stamps and this text stamp here and these little waves for the postage marks I think they will work really really well on the base layers because I want to do some stamping down the left side of this and I'm also using this Parisian note so I hope that you took advantage of the Stamptacular sale. I know this stamp set was very popular to purchase so I'm pretty sure a few of you will have that one if you want to recreate these layouts. I'm going to use mist and rosemary ink and a lot of first and second generation stamping. I've already got Parisian notes on my block. You can see it's quite a large stamp, but it stamps beautifully. And because it's quite textured, it doesn't really matter if you don't get the perfect stamp each time. That's the sort of look I'm going for. Move this out of the way so that I can bring my copy paper over a little bit because I'm going to do stamping off and then stamping on with second generation. I'm going to use mist ink. And that will tie in beautifully with the background border that I've selected. And I'm inking this up fairly generously. And then I'm going to stamp off. And you can see I haven't quite got all of it stamped up, but that doesn't matter because there's going to be some PML cards and some other elements on this page. And I'm going to be bringing in a whole lot of other stamped elements to put down this side. So I'm going to repeat this border. I'm going to create a border all the way up the left side. And then I'm going to rotate this a little bit so that they're not all equal. It's such a gorgeous stamp set and I really wish that I got time to play with this a little bit more in March because I saw some beautiful artwork created by people and I just wanted to replicate what they were doing because it's just so beautiful. So now I've done all of this stamping up the left and I've already planned out my layout but I am going to do another lot of stamping down on this edge but I want to get my photo holders and everything dry fitted first before I do that. You can see how beautiful that is. So now I'm going to come in with this line border. I'll actually stamp it here so you can see it's a cute little diagonal stripe and I'm going to put that in the bottom left and top left of each of these. 
and I'm stamping off so that I can just get a very light treatment of this. I don't want the solid part or the first generation look of the stamp on here. I want to get it with a little bit of a soft touch to it. So I'm just creating a little borders along each edge. So including this stripe, all of the stamps that I'm using now are from this Cosette card making workshop. Now I'm going to stamp this off so you can see. This is just like a text word. It doesn't actually read anything. It's just like a script word. So you can use this to your advantage to just stamp some of these images. And you can see that I am creating a little row of these coming down in first generation mist. And then I'm going to come in with this little Paris stamp. Oh, actually, before I do that one, I'm going to bring in this one that's a little bit longer. So I'll just stamp this onto the copy paper here so you can see what that one looks like. And I'm going to come in with first generation stamping for this as well. And I'm going to go off the page a little bit. And where I've got my script words is where I'm placing this. So whatever I do to one, I'm doing to another. I'm not going totally over the top each time, just making a little bit of a grouping. And then I'm going to come in with this stamp that is just all on its own. And this one's going to be second generation. And I'm putting that around these edges of where this other one was. It'd be good if I kept my mats together so that they didn't fall apart here. It's just sliding a little bit because I've got my all purpose mat underneath. So you can see I'm grouping these so that they all belong together. And now I'm going to bring in my rosemary ink. And all the rosemary stamping is in second generation. I'm going back to this text stamp here, stamping off and layering that up. And what this basically is doing is creating my own stamp clusters. I'm going to come back in with that circle stamp image, second generation rosemary. And then come in with this little wave that's like a postage mark. I'll stamp that there so that you can see what that looks like. And I'm going off the page again and second generation stamping. So wherever I've got one of these little clusters, I'm bringing in this wave as well. And sometimes I'm gonna put two on there. So that didn't take very long to do at all. And now that I'm looking at this, this part here I'm thinking might need a little bit more treatment to it. So I'm happy with how that's looking. So I'm just going to clear all of this away and then we're going to get into the dry fitting and part of the assembly of the left page. Now, I don't know if you remember when I went through the PML cards, I actually cut out the center part of this so that I could separate these words for joy and then the little meaning of joy as well. I've cut those into strips because I want to have those not as a solid big piece. I want this page to have a little bit of a delicate feel to it and just having it all in one big piece like that made it just a little bit too heavy. So I've cut those out to use later, but I didn't want to cut it all up so that it came straight in and I wasted this piece. So I used my scalpel and I just cut a couple of little areas here so that I could then do the fussy cutting and then the strip cutting. So I think I'm gonna have this one here with a photo holder. Now this is matted on mist so it matches in, but I quite like having this double mat here with the lines as well. And I fussy cut this piece out from the PML card as well. So that's gonna tuck under. I'm just trying to work out where I'm gonna put things. 
and I've got two three by three photos and the joy is going to be like the title and that's going to come here with the strips coming underneath so what I think I might do I have this piece this was a three by four PML card so I've just cut that in half that's going to anchor this piece here and then I've got my butterfly. Now I've already gone ahead and shaped this, but I'm gonna put that up here and I'll show you how I did the shaping. I've got my bone folder and I'm just bending the wings back like this. Now when you adhere it to your scrapbook page, you put a little bit of foam tape under it just to give it a little bit of stability, but that helps curve the wings back. And then just run your bone folder over the center part and that gives a nice little bit of lift to the butterfly. And you could just adhere it like this onto your page, but by putting foam tape under here, it gives it a little bit of support so that when you adhere it to your page, you've got a 3D effect. But this one's going on the right page. Now I know I said I was going to do another stamping of this Parisian Notes onto the background, but I'm bringing in my right page and I'm having a little look at it and I don't know if I actually need to do it. So this is what's good about doing some dry fitting first, rather than going in and just stamping on the page, I want to see how this looks. So I think what I'm gonna do is just turn my verse mat over. So I've got a nice solid surface to adhere everything and give you a little look at what's going on with this. And I think it might be too heavy if I bring in more of this stamping. I've done it in this section here, basically just with one of the Parisian Notes image and then done exactly the same treatment with the little postage marks and everything like that to add the texture in. And I think that's enough. If I put another one in, it's going to be a little bit heavy because I've got these words to put across as well and it might make it a little bit busy. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these pieces down. Now to get this piece together, I've put some tape runner on the right and the bottom edge of this so that I can line that up and then I'll be able to adhere it all in one go. So, and that looks pretty good. You can see the gorgeous mulberry color on the other side of this, but I decided I wanted a bit more of a monochromatic look with the mist. Mist is a really good neutral. I really, really love it. And it works with so many colors and it's got a blue, gray, green sort of tinge to it. This little banner here, I've actually cut out of a PML card. So if I sort of put this back together for you on camera, you'll see what I've done. This was the whole entire PML card and I put this aside to use for the more masculine type page, but I didn't want this more feminine floral on that page. So I've just sliced that down, cut out the banner piece to use in that top right section. So to bring that in, I'm going to bring in this piece of floral and I'm gonna tuck this under here. So I'm gonna lift this up just a little bit. I haven't pressed too hard. I really love this side too. It's really hard when both sides are so pretty, but I'm going to replicate this darker background floral on this left side over here. So that also helps anchor in this bottom part of the photo mat. I'm going to get my 3D foam tape and put some on the underside of the wings. Now this is partially going over the top of this photo. So all I'm going to peel off are the top parts of the butterfly wings so that I'm going to be able to slide my photo underneath. It's only going to be that bottom right section. So you just have to ease that in a little bit. But I think cutting that PML card into the wreath rather than leaving it as a full PML just gives a nice place for that butterfly to land. And then I need to do exactly the same thing for this side. I'm gonna move this mat away for the moment because I want to adhere the joy. And I'm just going to line all of this up. How do I want this? I wanna make sure I get all the words in the right order. So it's probably best to work from the bottom up. So I can have this coming out 
and over part of this photo so it's making everything look nice and cohesive and like it looks like it belongs together rather than having them all float on a page like this. There's nothing particularly wrong with that but I just like how things look when they overlap and form clusters and such. And then I'm going to bring in some bisque liquid pearls for this because I think they will work really, really well. And when you're using liquid pearls, always squeeze a little bit out and get it flowing nicely. So I'm going to put some of these bisque liquid pearls around these areas and I'm going to try and remember to work from left to right as I'm right handed so that I don't smear it because that's been known to happen. I'm just putting this around certain areas and it just makes things look like they belong. It's little groupings of it here and there. I hope I'm not getting my head in the way. I just realized I was leaning over a little bit, but especially around the butterflies, I think it just adds just a nice little touch. You can see all the elements. I'm going to lift this up so that you can see the bisque dots around the elements and all the stamping. I think it just adds gorgeous texture and then layering all of these sections up and creating some stamped clusters just works so so well. I will have everything that I've used today listed below. When you look at the description of a video, usually with YouTube, it only allows two lines for it to show, but there's always see more and you can click on that and that will open up all of the description and you'll be able to see everything that I have used today. So I'm going to call this one done and I'll be back in another video with the next in the pocket cards or the PML cards for the Cosette collection. I don't want the videos to be too long for you to sit and watch. So stay tuned and that one will be airing soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. I can't wait to bring you the next in this series of scrapbooking layouts. I just love the delicate feel of Cosette and it's such a pleasure to work with this collection. Happy crafting and bye for now. Mm -hmm.